imagined a world where two people who are not related to each other, who are located in diverse locations, far off, can trust each other. Have you imagined a world of that nature where individuals can trust each other without trust in between? When I say trust, I am referring to an entity or an organization in between. Blockchain has the potential to lead you into that particular world. The first blockchain application that came into the world is cryptocurrency. A cryptocurrency is the one which is not issued by a central bank, but it is generated by a computer algorithm. Bitcoin, which is the first cryptocurrency in the world, has 80% dominance in the world of cryptocurrencies. As a matter of fact, there are 710 such cryptocurrencies traded in 2,200 markets the world over. The market capitalization of these crypto coins is about $20 billion. $20 billion. At $20 billion, they equal the gross domestic product or, or the GDP of a country ranked 130 in the global ranking of countries. The cryptocurrencies also made their presence felt in the Winter Olympics of 2014, the Sochi Winter Olympics, when a cryptocurrency community called Dogecoin helped the bobsled team of Jamaica to return to the Winter Olympics after a gap of 14 years. They helped them to return to the Winter Olympics by raising $40,000 in a span of less than two days. As I said, the as I said, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin has 80% dominance. So let's see in terms of what is this Bitcoin? Bitcoin appeared on the horizon in the world in the year 2008 when a person by name Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a paper after the financial crisis in the United States of America. The paper is all about deregulation. The paper is all about decentralization. Now, nobody knows who this Satoshi Nakamoto is. That's why I call him Cyber Aladdin. Satoshi Nakamoto wrote the program, and this program resulted in creation of blocks. He wrote the program using an open source platform and C++ language. When this algorithm was released on the World Wide Web, it resulted in creation of blocks. As I speak, every 10 minutes, a block gets created, and this block contains 12.5 bitcoins. Why I call him as Cyber Aladdin? The story of Aladdin, where Aladdin rubs a, rubs a lamp to create a genie, is not an interesting story for the kids of the new millennium. It's not cool. But if you tell them, here is the Cyber Aladdin who wrote a code which has created a Today, in the world, a capitalization of $16 billion, they get excited, they get motivated. That's why I call him as Cyber Aladdin. As I said, there are 12.5 bitcoins that are created every 10 minutes per block, and this process will continue till 2040, when the production of bitcoins will halve by every four years, that is, they, go, they have, today as we speak, 12 and a half are getting created. In the next four years, they will, they will go to half of that, and the next four years, they will go to half of that. Today in the world, there are uh, 15 million bitcoins that are created. Balance six million bitcoins are yet to be created. At a market capitalization of $600, there is a wealth of $3.6 billion to be created. And each one of us in this room has an opportunity to create that wealth. How do we create that wealth? By mining these blocks, which, are, which can be solved by solving complex mathematical algorithms. If I had an opportunity, I would go back in my time machine, go to my maths class, and change my disposition towards mathematics from hate to love so that I can come back 
and get an opportunity to get hold of this particular wealth. And also, I think at 3.6 billion or 4 billion dollars of wealth to be created, I think for the people of Hyderabad, it will also give an another career op uh, opportunity in addition to the recently found career option or recently favored career option of badminton. <laughs> so, bitcoins, as I said, every 10 minutes the bitcoins are created. Uh, sorry, the, the blockchain is, uh, the blocks are created, and when the blocks are interlinked to each other, it kind of, a it kind of forms a chain. That is why it is called as a blockchain. Today, in the world, there are 100,000 100, merchants who accept bitcoins. You can buy coffee in the United States using bitcoin. You can buy content on Apple using bitcoin. You can buy software on Microsoft using Bitcoin. But unfortunately, Bitcoins have also become the most popular, the most popular method of transaction in what we call as a dark net. A dark net is a net that is, that is not accessed by our regular browsers like Google. It is accessed by a network called Tor. And in a dark net, you can buy stuff that is forbidden like you know, drugs, ammunition, and stuff like that. And Bitcoin, unfortunately, became a most preferred option of transaction in that particular dark net. I would like to build an analogy. If Bitcoin is like a pearl, which may have lost its luster, blockchain is the oyster which has created the Bitcoin. While the Bitcoin has lost the luster, blockchain has a lot of lot of potential. So let's see what is this blockchain. A blockchain technically is called as a distributed ledger technology. A distributed ledger is where people have access to information. Every person on the blockchain network has an access to this information. Today the information is held by the intermediaries. A bank holds your information. A share registry company holds your share information, but in a distributed ledger technology, this information is available to everyone. The fact that this information is available to, available to everyone, it brings in the required transparency, it brings in the required openness, and we also, in technical terms, we call as, it brings in the required immutability. Immutability, you cannot go back and change the transaction because each transaction is interlinked to one, one another. From that perspective, let's see in terms of what are the various commercial applications of uh, the blockchain network. The first one is money remittance. Today in the world, there are about $500 billion of money gets remitted. Uh, the money moves from developed countries to developing countries. And that piece of money is about $450 billion. In an Indian context, the average size of money transfer is about 18,000 rupees. And the average cost of money transfer is about 8.4%. So if I, get the, if, if I get my math correct, it's about 1,400 rupees for a transfer of 18,000 uh, 18, rupees. And when you... When you, when you do this particular money transfer on a, a blockchain network using a Bitcoin or any other uh, currency, the cost of the money transfer decreases, by, uh, decreases to 2%. That means there's an extra saving of 6%. That means there's an extra money of roughly about 1,000 rupees in the hand of the recipient. And and in addition to that, there is also speed of, of that money transfer. What internet did to your personal communication in terms of email communication, the speed it created, or blockchain network has the possibility of creating the same speed for the money transfer. And I say that out of the empirical evidence, I performed a transaction involving three cross-border wallets one the Zepay wallet that you see on the screen, which is a wallet in the Indian context. 
And there are two other wallets, Mycelium and Jax, which are the wallets in the United States. And when I moved Bitcoins from ZPay to Mycelium and Jax, even before I moved from one folder of ZPay to the folder of Mycelium, the money was there. That's the speed at which the money gets transmitted. And on the screen, you will also see the blockchain transaction, which is this particular transaction that I performed is etched into the blockchain network for eternity. It is becoming so much popular that in Africa, where we have heard of M-Pesa, M-Pesa is being slowly replaced by BitPesa. Now let's go to the next commercial application or the next, uh, the next application. Let me give you a situation. We all have heard of uh, driverless cars. And what happens when a person sells his or her driverless car to an another person? How does the car know that the ownership has changed? The car not only knows that the ownership has changed, but moves from the incumbent owner to the new owner. Will you hire a driver to move the car from the incumbent owner to the new owner? If you hire a driver, it sounds like a prehistoric practice. It's a driverless car. So you need a commercial con uh, structure and a governance structure to manage that. That can be provided by what we call as smart contracts. Smart contracts are the contracts which are written, which can be interpreted by two computers. They are not only interpreted by the two computers, but they are also the governance of the contract is managed by these two computers. Today we live in the world of connected devices, what we call as the internet of technology. We all have heard of washing machines that reorder their detergent, their detergent powder when, the thresh, when it goes below a particular threshold limit. And that happens through a smart contract. Smart contracts in the world today are written on a network called Ethereum. It's fascinating to know that Ethereum is, uh, has been invented by a person called Vitalik Buterin. He invented it when he was 19 years old. Now he is 21 years old. And Ethereum is already valued at $1 billion. We all know about our famous Mughal Gardens in Srinagar, where we import tulips from Holland so that they can bloom during the summers and people can go and visit and see, that, uh, see those tulips. Hitherto, those tulips were imp uh, are being imported from Holland and when the tulips are not stored in an ambient temperature, they get spoiled. Today, what people do is when the consignment arrives, you open the consignment, you do a statistical quality control and you check whether the tulips are good or not. Uh, that's how you determine. But with smart contracts and with, uh, with IoT, Internet of Technology, people can put what we call as the thermosensor. The thermosensor is put in the consignment. The thermosensor streams the temperature of that consignment during the transit and moment the temperature goes below or above the ambient levels, the contract gets auto-cancelled. No questions asked. That is, smart, that is smart contract. Today, the internet has given us recognition. It has given us fame. We don't have to depend on an intermediary to publish something and to get recognized. But the same internet has not given us an opportunity to make money. Here comes an application on the blockchain network called PeerTracks. A peer track, what it does is it allows artists to produce their work, be it a composer who is composing music or a videographer who is shooting a film. They can put it on peer tracks. And once they put it on peer tracks, people will not only watch the content, but will also pay for that particular content. Today, without naming the most popular video streaming companies, you can publish your work on those video streaming companies. You get recognition for that work, but you don't get paid for such streaming. But with a blockchain 
network and with an application like PeerTrax, you not only get recognition, but you also get the, the required, required money. So the internet of recognition becomes an internet of finance and it becomes an internet of, of money. Today, if you, if you see in the, in the world over, we are all united as netizens of the World Wide Web, the netizens of internet. But we are still separated from each other by our nationality, more so by our currency. My prediction is that over a period of time, there will be three money networks, the cryptocurrency networks, that will come into, come into the picture. And every individual across the world can become a part of this particular network. It doesn't matter where that individual is located. And by, by doing so, we will be able to accomplish, the, accomplish or overcome the inequitable distribution of money and wealth that exists in the society today. The government of India also has an option to put the rupee on the blockchain network. When the rupee is put on the blockchain network, then the rupee will give the required visibility as to how the rupee moves in the economy. It not only gives the visibility, it also gives us the greatest potential to reduce the black version of the rupee. And blockchain is going to change our world dramatically and drastically. The way we are used to deploying assets today, we buy the asset and deploy the asset. With a blockchain network, a group of people in a community can come together without an intermediary. They can do a timeshare on their cars. They can exchange the cars without the need of an intermediary or without a need of an aggregator. A time will come when you will not, you will not buy assets, but you will deploy the assets and pay for that by what you use. You can pay for a processor by transaction. You can pay for a software based on how much, how much you, you use it. It's generally said that in the world, when things change, nobody, takes a, nobody makes a recognition of it. And here comes a time where things are bound to change, and you have an opportunity to not only recognize it, but become a part of that particular change. And finally, if I have given you the enough information about blockchain, and if you're motivated, and if you ever venture into blockchain and make money, please take a note of my two wallets, the cryptocurrency wallets, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And you not only note it, but if you make money, send me, send me give me my Guru Dakshina onto those wallets. And if you do so, it will be a perfect blend of our ancient tradition with new age modernity and technology. Thank you.